What's happening? Welcome to another Viking Views. This time, the dub edition. Double header, we got the Golf GTI Mark 7 and... A 2017 Transporter T6 T28 102 Highline. Also, just for you, both of us as well. You can't go wrong, you know? Exactly. You can't go wrong. Beard is back, red beard. <laughs> Links to both of us in the description because we're both going to be putting this on our channels so then each other's viewers can find the other exactly. one if you need to yeah definitely so we're both bringing something else to the table so, exactly yeah. right. exactly so where do we find ourselves on this monday afternoon well starting the monday afternoon the weather is gorgeous aside from a little bit of wind but we ain't gonna be complaining but we are in the old margham depot which is pretty damn cool because normally you can't get in here but let's just say no man knows a man and we found ourselves right where the trains are really it's, it's a rare occasion might make a few people jealous but don't go giving me a holler because this is a one-time thing <laughs> it's not a rare occasion it's not a one-time thing <laughs> this is the power we've got exactly people know exactly it's the beards it's, it's you know the beards are coming we quick just, yeah get, get yeah, back in it yeah we just you know it's easier to say yes than it isn't to know to us <laughs> shout out to sinclair bridge and audi fantastic service and the gift that she keeps on giving i said many cars with them faultless the new s4 is due to arrive in a couple of weeks that review will be happening real soon and also sinclair van swansea again faultless couldn't be more helpful i went in a rainy day because couldn't really eat an ice cream in mumbles ended up buying a transporter as you do and yeah little shout out on my side to sinclair vw in swansea where i bought this that's it. I can't say I've had a lot of experience with them because the car hasn't let me down. So yeah, let's get this started. Let's have a good look at this boy and get this one out of the scene. So first off, we have a 2014 Mark 7 Golf GDI. There was two variants at the time you could buy. There was the GDI, which is what I've got, and there was the performance pack on top of it, which was a dealer option for £995. Believe me, if I could have got it, I would have, but I maxed it out buying this. With it, I would have got adjustable suspension, extra 10 brake horsepower, and little stickers on the brake calipers. Who doesn't want little stickers on a brake calipers? Now, back in 2014, when I bought this little beast, I paid the grand sum of around £32,000. But it's been worth every penny, let me tell you. Now, the options I've got on this little boy are the Vienna heated leather seats, 1700 of your finest British pounds, uh, the Dyne Audio sound system, £525, fantastic, couldn't live without it, because let's be fair, I could have paid a grand and I could have had an extra 10 brake horsepower, but be honest, most of the time we spend our, our day sat in traffic, don't we? So I'd rather have the sound system than that, thank you kindly. And cheeky little £145 option went for the little button where the car parks itself because it's already got the parking sensors around it £145 quid. it's a nice little thing to impress the boys and girls with isn't it? so this particular flavour of GDI is a 2 litre petrol engine pumping out 217 brake horsepower 300 something foot pounds of torque I believe got a note to 60 roughly 6.3 seconds as it's got the DSG double clutch gearbox in it. I haven't looked any of this up. This is off the top of my head, so don't start leaving comments saying, oh, 6.2. It's as good as it's gonna get. As you can see, there's one or two little modifications in there. I went for the liquid dipped patterning on some of the engine parts. You can also see I've got black VW badges front and back. I've also debadged the doors and the boot from the GTI logo that was there and when it was new this was silver uh, I went out and got the red one which is what you would get with the GTI performance pack but I just like the color of it red and carbon steel gray stunning coming round to the rear of the vehicle you can see we've got the 18 inch Austin alloys which was standard on the model at the time we've also got the LED rear brake lights which were exclusive to the GTI model. Don't believe the lesser models like the GTD have got them. We've also got the parking sensors I mentioned earlier, and we've got twin exhausts. Now you can 
tell some of the models apart the GTI has got two times one pipes the GTD has got two littler pipes together and the R, the 300 brake horsepower one has got two by two that's how you can tell when somebody's trying to pull one over on it so as I said we've got black VW logo on the back we've also not got the GTI badge that used to be there let's have a quick look inside the booth pretty standard as it comes it's got a load floor you can stick things underneath or you can lower that down to get a little bit more height on it I'll be honest the reason I got the bungee straps in there I don't like to take prisoners but things slide around in here like nobody's business so got to keep things held down a little bit could have had this cargo mesh net looking thing but I didn't have about 50 quid to spare for it also in the back we've got the subwoofer that comes with the Dyn Audio sound pack nice little punch to it not as beefy as some of them out there but it does the job for this size of car definitely so that's the boot and I gotta say it's got that good old-fashioned classic VW noise when you shut it gotta love that haven't I let's have a quick look inside I gotta say, whilst it's not quite an Audi interior, it's very nice in here indeed. Obviously we've got the Vienna leather seats, heated as I said. Got a lovely leather wrapped flat bottom steering wheel, lovely GTI logo on there. Got the infotainment system, didn't opt for the navigation, that was about two grand, I just didn't need to spend on it. Got the alloy pedals down the bottom. Got that little button where the car parks itself, like I said and the awesome DSG double clutch gearbox stunning we've also got as standard honeycomb black piano finished interior trim electric windows obviously little chrome accents around the place and you won't see it in this daylight but on the door and on the sill we've got a little red strip that lights up as I said before, we've also got the Dyn Audio sound system, which sounds sweet. Unfortunately, I can't put it on to show you because if I use any music in this video, it's a copyright infringement, thanks to YouTube. I know it's not exactly the aim of the GDI, but you've got a decent little bit of storage in here. You've got little compartments here, there and everywhere. Exactly where you need them. Handy just to chuck things in. And here's the difference between this again something like I don't want to put any other makes down but possibly a lesser car make in this one you've got a little bit of rubber flooring stop things sliding around in the doors it's carpeted so it does make a noise if things are moving around in there it's those little finishes those little details to make all of the difference with this car being a two litre petrol on a good run returns around 33 34 miles to the gallon if you're hooning it around and if you're just doing short journeys it will be less than that but that's the nature of the beast with this thing. I gotta say, after four years in my loving care, it's been a good old girl, and it's the right level of comfort and sportiness. Because you can get something like a Ford Focus RS, where it's just fast, stupidly fast, loads of torque, no grip, but I saw one coming towards me on the road the other day and the thing was bouncing up and down from how stiff the suspension was and I was thinking, that's no good to me I've sat in this car and done four hour journeys absolutely fine it's got that exact wonderful level of luxury, comfort, sport it's a wonderful all rounder love it, absolutely love it what can I say, in the four years I've been driving her it's been faultless I've rarely had to go in other than for regular service in MOT recently four years in mind I've had to replace the tires I will say that when I first got her and I thought 217 brake horsepower I thought that's going to be nice but I have gotten used to that a little bit it's not the sportiest car in the world but it does what you need it to but I'll be honest I wouldn't mind a little bit more grunt Jordan you've driven it what's your impression yeah. okay totally non-biased because it's not my car but I've driven the car and I gotta say it goes well because I said currently I'm in a, an A6 2 litre diesel instead I got the transport that you've already seen 
but getting into a petrol having that bit of grunt you know when you're just driving you've got a nice pop out the exhaust it goes well and it handles well stops on the key as well and it's, it's a good bit of fun if you just want something to bomb around town in or that you can take out on the country road on a sunday afternoon it's a car for you honestly you've got a good german engineer in just get it done that's all i'm gonna say it's, it's a good car very good car So, for now, that's the GDI. Let's get a look at this transporter. It's so, alright guys, here she is. 2017 Transporter T6. It's a T28, just a babier one if you like. I carry vintage toys. I don't need to carry all the big building stuff, so it was ideal for me. I said it's the 102, which means it's a 102 brake. I will be honest with you, it could do with more grunt. Like I, with this, you've got to plan where you want to go. If you want to go up a hill or you want to just weave in and out of traffic, that foot's flat to the floor, you want to be going. So, But if I want to go faster, I suppose, I jump in the car. So it does the job for me. But if, if you do want a bit more power, go for the bi-turbo. I just go for one, like I think it's a 150 brake or the 180 brake. Don't don't knock me on that, but it's, it's, it's around about that. And I said it's a five-speed manual. Personally, I kind of wish I went for the automatic. But there we go, I'm just an old man. Right, so as you can see, it's the Highline spec, finished in candy white. I know a lot of vans are white, but I like white, to be fair with you, and it matched my white A6 at the time. Highline spec means you've got all the nicer goodies, which are mainly inside, but the obvious, colour-coded bumpers and the fog lamps, the corner and lights, which is a nice little feature. Being the 102, it's got the smaller 16-inch wheels. Now, at the time, I was thinking that I want to go for the 18-inch sport lines. I kind of wish I did. It probably will be on there at some point as well, because they are a bit too, you know, you've got that four-wheel drive life. Only thing a bit different than I'd done, paid to have the wind deflectors put on, paid to have the bars put on there. You had the option between chrome, uh, chrome or black. Had to be black, didn't it? Chrome, you know, took so 2000s, just saying. And yeah, basically the Highline stuff is inside. That's where you're going to see all the world of the difference, because you've got the air conditioning, you've got the nicer steering wheel, you've got the nice big touchscreen in there. Steering wheel, multifunctioning as well, so you've got all the stuff on there, the cruise control on there. Heated front window as standard. Now that is an option every car should have. Then cold winter months that we do have, sit in there, put it on, next thing, ice is gone. And later on in the 2017, which I'm a bit gutted about, Volkswagen started putting that pre-sense the automatic stopping thing as standard. I had this in June and that started happening in September, so I missed it by a couple of months. So when you, if you are going to look for a new one, you will have that. Trust me, it comes in handy. One of my good friends, not paying attention, you know, the golf start itself. And no, it's not that golf either. See, as we said, two litre diesel, not a blue motion. I suppose kind of, if you want a better miles per gallon, blue motion would be the way to go. But it has got the start stop, which you turn off anyway, well I do personally. Um, yeah, add blue as well. Now in the A6, it drinks add blue. Every thousand miles or so, you gotta put that add blue in. I'll be honest with you, in 8,000 miles and my foot is flat to the floor all of the time because I abuse the hell out of it. Don't buy it right to fit when it does come up part exchange. I've had to put add blue in it once. And I mean, it's a world of difference. It does last a good 5,000 miles. Miles per gallon wise, Obviously, depending on how you're driving it. If I'm on the motorway sitting there, I will get mid 40s out of it, which is a big van when it's full. I suppose it's not bad, to be fair. Right, so around back, it's very much the same. Still a van. But as you can see, it's got the color coded bumpers, which do make the world of difference. Got the parking sensors on there. Got the assist on screen as well, so you can see how far you are going. You know, no window, even though it's got a rear view mirror, so I can check how good that beard's looking when I'm in there. And that's just for the automatic white buzz and lights, to be fair. But step on in the magic van. As you can see, beach days, to be honest with you. You know, put a blanket in there, watch that sunset if you've got a girl to watch it with. Unless you've got many girls to watch it with. But yeah, come and have a look. So as you can see, you've got the big massive barn doors on the back. We've also got the slider there which you can also open from the inside. It's boarded out inside, kills the noise. You've got a nice support there. So you've basically, you're no road noise, no nothing from the back. I think Volkswagen wanted about 300 and something pound for this. Just say to them, I'll buy the van if you throw the boarding in. That's what happened. So it is handy. Problem is with having a van like this, all that room, many of your friends will call you and say, Jordan, I need this picking up. Oh, can you come and help me move this? That being the problem. 
you say to him, no sorry bro, I'm busy. So yeah, back to it, good German steel. Even this van, you got that good solid noise. Let's have a little look inside. Right, so inside it's a nice place to be. You will notice you're a lot higher than everybody else on the road, which kind of gives you, that doesn't affect your ego, but you think, yeah, you know, move out the way sort of thing. I'm joking with it, I just chill with it. But yeah, inside, highlight means you've got the nice steering wheel, which is very much similar to the new Tiguan steering wheel. So you've got all your buttons on there, the voice control, said Bluetooth, which is standard on the Highline. And I, I'll tell you, in the Caddy in the past, I had no, like the, um, the backing support there. And on the phone, you couldn't hear nothing. So all you could hear was a road noise. In this, it's like being in a car. It is, it is like a, a nice car, let's say. But yeah, you've got the automatic lights, automatic wipers. It's a nice little feature. As I said, you've got the rear view, even though you're not gonna see nothing behind, because if, even if I took the support out, I've got no windows anyway. Music system, you know, for a van, it's quite good. It is quite bassy, and to be honest, you lose. I looked at just the start line and the trend lines, and the inside, it just didn't really do much for me. I said you could tell you were in the van. At least with this, you've got a little bit of, yeah, you know what? That's that's quite nice. I can spend some time in there. So yeah, that's near enough about the inside, really. I will say you've got heated door mirrors, electric mirrors, which is quite nice. I know not many vans do it, even though it's 2018, standard, still vans don't do it. You've got electric windows, but that's enough for the inside. Right, one thing I will say, the transporters are quite big, but the turning circle on it is incredible. Just a little spot there, and just check this bad boy out. You know, normally you'd have had to reverse turn to get in it or whatever. I hit the curb in the wind, just saying. Look at that, executed like a pro. Yeah, kiddos, transport vans. They're quiet, they're comfy. There's plenty of room in it. You've got all your creature comforts. Like, I'm six foot four, and I can sit there, even with that support. And I'm quite comfy. I can sit in a van. I, have to, I do journeys five, six hours, one way. And it's faultless. I so said, the only thing, personally, for me, I would like is the auto box. But even then, it's just such an easy gearbox to drive with. No problems at all. So guys, thank you very much for joining us on this special dub edition of Viking Views. We've had a wonderful day here looking at the sports car and the workhorse. Who's got a transporter? <laughs> it's the van to have, what can I say? <laughs> Join us again next time where we might have an Audi Q3, a BMW 240i. M240i. M240i. There's a lot of cars in the balance at the minute, but we're going to do it in two separate ways because whereas a lot of people will bring you reviews of brand new cars, we're also going to review stuff that's a year old, couple of years old, so you know exactly what it's been like. Well, you know, the owners of having it over over that period, so you can tell you the good points, bad points, because not everyone can go out and you know no, got no. the budget for a brand new car. So exactly. that's where we might be a little bit different. And we're honest. If we tell you it's crap, it's crap. All right. <laughs> exactly. Like with my own, I've got four years' experience of driving that. I know everything I need to know about it. The kind of thing you might want to know if you're picking one up used. Yeah. Yeah. Same goes for the transport. I've had that six months. I can tell you exactly the bits which are good and the. Well, the bits I wish had done a bit different, really, i.e. engine size, and I wish I went for a combi, but at the end of the day, it's a work van, so what can you do? But, yeah, I've, hopefully they've enjoyed that episode. and Hopefully so, and I think we'll just be wrapping our one up there. Until next time. Take it easy, guys. <laughs>Again, thank you very much for watching just to say that if you've got a cool or interesting car doesn't have to be brand new doesn't have to be something fantastic just something you think should be featured give us a show obviously the closer to south wales you are the easier it is for us to do it but that's not to say we wouldn't travel a little bit further afield something a little bit special definitely i'm gonna shout it out classic cars if you've got something different an old beetle i don't know an old mg you think i can fit in it and i can drive it Give us a shout because we'll, we'll make a video out of it and then we'll just let other people know exactly what it's like getting into a classic, literally. Exactly. At the end of the day, it's a little showcase of your vehicle. Doesn't matter whether it's Japanese, American, British, anything goes. Doesn't German, matter. German, German. German. Doesn't matter whether it's six months old 
60 years old. Give us a shout and we'll have a look at it. And if we can do something with it, we'll make a cracking video out of it. Definitely. In a lovely place, just like this. You'll get some good shots out of it. <laughs> exactly. Furthermore, if you've got a lovely location we can film in, <laughs> give us a shout. We'd be happy to showcase that as well. Cheers, guys. Take it easy. Ha <laughs> ha.